I'd like to start a series of YouTube videos on how synthesizers work, how to make the most of them and get the kind of sounds out that you would like. I don't really want to call these lectures because for the most part they're just an introduction to the concepts and you know you don't really need to watch them if you don't want to. If you've been around for a long time, if you've been using musical instruments for a long time, then you probably already know this information. I'm mainly aiming this at beginners, people that aren't really musicians that want to know how synthesizers work, that want to make weird sounds and have something to play with when they have a lot of free time. The main synthesizer that I'm going to be working with here is the Hackme Rocket. Now this is a $200 kit. It was a limited edition meaning that they may not be available for sale anymore. When I bought mine back in August 2013, there were only five left. So you may be able to find one used or pick something up off of eBay, but for the most part, I'm not expecting anybody to be able to use these things as well, to have the rocket in front of them. This is just a way of getting started. Most synthesizers will have at least one oscillator. The main idea behind a synthesizer is that you have some kind of audio signal that can be used for producing the starting sound that you want to use for your final product. In our case, main waveforms, the sine wave, the square wave, and the triangle wave. The rocket has another 15, or another 12, total of 15 settings, 16 settings if you count noise, but most of those aren't simple waveforms. When we start with waveform, this is going to be a signal operating somewhere between maybe 20 hertz and uh, 2k hertz, anything below that and it's really hard to hear, anything above that and it's going to sound like a screech. The majority of the synthesizers on the market don't use sine waves. And the reason is that they're too simple. They don't give you anything to work with when you start changing the frequency cutoff setting. The, what I mean is, there's not a lot of option here when we change the cutoff filter frequency. If we instead go with a more complex waveform, filter has something to work with. So most synthesizers will have a square wave, a triangle wave, and possibly a sawtooth. This is fine. This gives us something to start with. We have a note when we press the keyboard key. But it's not very interesting. So in our case, we have a second oscillator. 
And this oscillator also has the same waveforms. But what we can do with the rocket is choose how much of oscillator 1 and how much of oscillator 2 we want to use. So right now, I'm 100% oscillator 1. 100% oscillator 2, 50-50 mix. And I could have a sine wave for oscillator 1, square wave for oscillator 2. The next thing that we can do is D2. Oscillator 2 is picking its frequency based on oscillator 1. If detune is at the middle setting, then oscillator 1 and oscillator 2 will have the exact same frequencies. For the Hackme, the change, the step change in detune is per note. So, Rather than a smooth transition across the entire range, we're getting individual steps. And we can detune up, or we can detune down. pretty much it for the oscillators. We've got two audio oscillators. They're going to be running somewhere between 20 hertz or maybe 60 hertz up to 2k hertz or 3k hertz depending on the synthesizer. In our case we've got oscillator 1, oscillator 2. This allows us to choose three different waveforms sine wave, square wave, triangle wave, other synthesizers may have a wider range of selections and at least include sawtooth or maybe reverse sawtooth. Then we have the ability to mix the oscillators together and detune oscillator 2 off of oscillator 1. And that's it for this portion.